在这边的时候，我们就看到了，对Hanfu is the name given to these traditional garments. They are regal. I truly felt like a princess. At first glance, they reminded me of the hanbok, which is worn in Korea, and some of the styles also reminded me of the kimono, which is worn in Japan. I later found out that both Korea and Japan were majorly influenced by the Chinese when the ancient capital of Xi'an was the richest and most influential city in the world. Much, much later. <laughs> Stay here. No, we can talk and walk at the same time. Uh, guys, we just grabbed some ice cream and uh, it's so beautiful. The lights are stunning, guys. Mm. It's yeah. so beautiful. It's so romantic. And the pagoda is here. <laughs> can you see it? Okay, move your head a little bit. Oh, uh, yeah, wait. There's the pagoda. <laughs>
This is the statue of Xuanzang. He was the Chinese Buddhist monk who did a 17-year pilgrimage by foot from China to India. He traveled to India to learn more about his Buddhist religion because at the time there was a limited number of Chinese translated Buddhist Sanskrits. When he returned to China, he brought back extensive knowledge on the Buddhist religion and also detailed descriptions of ancient India. The pagoda was then built solely to house the translated Buddhist texts, but today the pagoda is used for tourist purposes. Buddhism that's just so admirable is the commitment and the dedication. I've been to so many Buddhist temples and have never been compelled to make a wish until this trip. I think that's because I'm at a point in my life where I'm so secure in my spirituality and not confined by the restrictions of religion. My friend Yulia explained to me what I needed to do and that if my wish comes true, I need to go back to Xi'an and thank Buddha. <laughs> well, that wish hasn't come to fruition yet. Hey guys, so we just left the pagoda, but it was closed for uh, renovation, so we couldn't go to the top. And now we're walking to go get our traditional Chinese dresses. What are they called? Han. Yeah. Han. Yes. Um, it's so different from how it looked last night. Last night, this is the area that had all the lights and, you know, crowds and crowds of people. So it's a bit dead this morning, uh, but I really like it because then I can get to see the architecture and some of the other things that I missed yesterday. So I will continue the vlog once I get to the clothing store. Okay, now it's time to get the hair and makeup done. I doubt I'm gonna get my makeup done. <laughs> Some more stuff. I doubt they even have my shade. So no makeup, just hair. These are all the hair pieces they use for the looks. So what's the history behind these hairdos? I don't have any answer for you. They should tell us. So this close? The the hair, the history behind the hair. 
like these updos. Why why did they Okay, so this the clothes mm -hmm. I'm trying right now is actually from Tang. Tang yes, Dynasty. Dynasty and you know Tang is the most uh, the richest dynasty in the history. So mm -hmm. the hair is going up and have a lot of decoration on the ear. It looks like like more like fantasy style. Mm. So guys, we finally made it to the Terracotta Wario, as it called, a museum. Museum. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, so this is basically one of the things you absolutely have to see in Xi'an. It's like going to uh, France and seeing the Eiffel Tower, or going to Peru and seeing Machu Picchu. It's the thing that you absolutely need to see. And um, I'll probably do a voiceover once we're inside and get to see the place because it's massive. What do you have to say for yourself? Just dress the casual dress because you don't want just everyone take your pictures without notice you, right? Yes. So guys, we are in We're our kind of Han <laughs> Dynasty outfits because we thought it would be so cool and so cute and literally everyone has been trying to take pictures of us and it's not fun. Um, but, you know, it is what it is. Um, yeah, so come along and I will share a bit of some history about why it was created and how they discovered it and hopefully you can learn something new today. <laughs> oh my god the terracotta army was constructed as part of the tombstone for the first emperor of china qin xin huang who is credited for unifying china he was only 13 years old when he became the emperor he believed these sculptures would serve him in the afterlife and they include a mix of chariots armored soldiers and archers the scale and the magnitude of this place is mind-blowing. 
Only about a thousand soldiers have been unearthed and each facial expression, uniform and details are unique to each soldier. From Monday to Friday, what, what here? Ask me here. Mm. There? Mm, I see the horses yeah. over there. You know, it's so so all the archaeologists are Chinese? Yes. Uh, so you're this, the German archaeologists are here. Are, are here yeah. to help. History have an exhibit just like this. The earth and My tour guide was explaining that there's as many as 8,000, if not more, soldiers still buried. When the soldiers are unearthed, they are painted in bright colors, but the color fades in a couple of hours. They've tried various ways to preserve the colors, including vacuum sealing the sculptures, but nothing has worked. So the unearthed sculptures will remain buried until the appropriate technology has been discovered to preserve the colors of the terracotta warriors. This is the highest ranked uh, general in the Terracotta Army. Hey, boo! <laughs> <laughs> okay, let me pull your boyfriend back. Yep. Taking my baby home. <laughs> <laughs> you got a Xi'an boyfriend now. Yep. Oh, then you need to come to Xi'an every year. I'm off the market. Just say hello guys. to your boyfriend's parents. <laughs> off the market. We'll put the tag back. Um, um, it's kind of hard to close. That's okay. The thing about me, I will eat the sweet food. Even in my princess dress. <laughs> Okay, princess. It's all good. Okay, starting off with 
This classic too. Wh which one? We drink the, the soup, the boiling yeah, water. Cook the soup. Oh, you know that's why you can digest them? That's the question you can be asking me. Why, like, Is it spicy? Okay guys, so found a restaurant not too far from the uh, Terracotta Warrior Museum and I am about to finally try the Biang Biang noodles. Um, I really love the presentation. Um, so Yulia is mixing for me. Mix, mix, mix. Oh, I decided to take the outfit. I'm sorry. I don't think I can rise to show in the camera. I'm not a princess anymore. So Yulia gave up on her outfit, and I, on the other hand, I'm committing till the very end. <laughs> yes. So, here I am in my Han Dynasty outfit about to eat the most traditional dish in Xi'an, Biang Biang. So, I don't think it can get any more cultural than this. Alright, I'm about to try. Oh, these noodles are thick. How do I pick one? Do I just bite into it? Just bite. Uh, I can't even eat that soft hot noodles. Yeah. 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 Wow, it's so good. The noodle is so soft. Except I can't eat them. <laughs> Look at that. That's how it looks. Literally, an entire mission to pick one. Ten out of ten would recommend. Wow. <laughs> I'm just laughing at me. I want to say something actually. Um, by the way, you know what's interesting is how I feel like during my travels in Asia, um, allergies are never a concern. They will never ask you if are you allergic to nuts or anything it's just the food just comes and you have to figure it out if you're allergic or not so guess what i did that <laughs> demolished demolished gone how do they go in mela no more male Dad. <laughs> Guys, this was so good. I think definitely Biang Biang is one of my favorite dishes now. 10 out of 10 would recommend. Um, so I just finished and according to Xi'an tradition, you're supposed to drink the 
The water retained from oh, these guys. The water retained from boiling the noodle. If it's too loud, I might just do a voiceover. I'm so nervous. It just tastes like flour. It tastes like flour. Don't taste it. It's not don't taste the things. It's just clean your mouth. I'm gonna mix it with my drink. In between. <laughs> I might get into a food coma. <laughs> Thank you.